It's safe to say that Grey Zone Warfare isn't trying to be an accessible extraction shooter like Call of Duty Warzone's DMZ mode. This is one for the hardcore realism set who want to feel the thrill of high stakes victory and the agony of bleeding out after getting shot in the leg as you try to limp toward the chopper. Not everyone wants to fuss with deciding between 732 Parabellum versus Full Metal Jacket rounds, or dealing with the fact that 556x59 rounds don't fit in a 556x72 magazine. But for those who do, GZW serves that audience fairly well in its early access state, at least when it isn't crashing, failing to register clear hits, or making you and your friends wait in line for your ride home. Request denied. All available birds are in flight. You and your four-person squad undertake very basic missions into hostile territory by clearing AI enemies and gathering gear or quest items to take back with you. Dying on the battlefield means any equipment on you is lost unless you find your corpse before someone else does. That's effective at raising the stakes for an exciting sense of tension as you deploy, fight, and extract. The battlefield and equipment strongly resemble the Vietnam War era. And in keeping with that setting, Surviving out there is appropriately tough. Enemies, be they AI combatants or humans from opposing factions, are observant and accurate enough to pump rounds into you with lethal efficiency if you give them the chance. The sense of danger is palpable and exciting. Unless you're a crack shot, these guys are also capable of shrugging off a surprising amount of gunshots and stab wounds. Some of that can be attributed to Grey Zone Warfare's ambitious realistic damage system. You won't be able to instantly take someone down by shooting them in their limbs or much of their torso, but shots to the right part of the chest or head can do the job. It elevates the importance of very accurate shooting in a way that I really like. It's more challenging and more rewarding when you lock into a John Wick-like Zen state and decimate your adversaries with deadly precision. If it catches on, this could forever end the LOL, I killed you by shooting your foot, phenomenon of video game shooters. However, when you're on the receiving end, it's a great example of where simulation and fun are at odds. Sure, you can often shrug off incoming non-lethal damage and fight a bit longer, but eventually bleeding out after a firefight you won is pretty common. Even if you successfully keep the looming specter of death at bay with field medicine, your wounded warrior is extremely compromised and a lot harder to enjoy. And it sure is anticlimactic to gear up with a squad for a deep incursion into enemy territory only to have to limp back to extraction after the first bullets fly because you took a few unfortunate hits. If I wanted to suffer the consequences of my sloppy mistakes in battle, I'd enlist. But of course, the most frustrating times are the too frequent occasions when the damage system just doesn't work because hit registration is unreliable. Too often, shots that appear to be on the mark do no damage whatsoever. Not every bullet is realistic, but the weapons sure are. To a fault sometimes. Take one of your starting guns for example, the M4 rifle. While it's hard to find a military shooter that doesn't use the M4A1 carbine, often with a few choices of optional accessories, GZW drills down to its individual parts to an impressive degree. Want to trade in the better handling of your short barrel for the greater accuracy of a longer one? Sure. Interested in that scope? Better grab the mount first because it won't just clip onto the weapon's frame by itself. It's impressive that you can buy and swap in over a dozen parts to essentially build your own M4 from scratch, transforming it from a compact and lightweight gun for close-up fighting into something longer with powerful optics to use as a versatile sniper rifle. It's fascinating how in-depth it is, and what an absolute pain in the ass it can be to figure out if you aren't already a walking encyclopedia of gun parts. Being dense isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's actually one of the things I really like about GZW. But the lack of any sort of tutorial stands out as a big miss because I'd love to learn more about these guns if it would teach me. But assuming you can get over that hump, once you are geared up, it's time to head out into the field. The options here are pretty limited in the current early access version, however. You can either run around the open world, getting into fights and gathering loot off of fallen enemies, or work through a list of simple find or kill tasks. They at least do a good job pushing you to interesting areas, like new towns or enemy hideouts, and the loot that you're awarded with at the end is often excellent. 
The issue with tasks comes primarily from the shared world nature of GZW. With multiple squads all spread around the map, shooting at anything that moves, it is all too common for targets to be dead before you arrive. They can take around 15 minutes to respawn, and hiding in a corner hoping no other squads come through to take the next kill isn't much fun. There are also frequent objectives that are literally locked behind doors and the specific keys to open them are painfully infrequent random drops from enemies. It's a common enough problem that players have built coordinated key exchanges and unlock services. That may be a testament to what I found to be a very helpful and supporting player base, but it's ultimately a community-driven band-aid for an unnecessary self-inflicted wound. At least you'll have some sights to take in while you're waiting around because GZW is already a very good looking game. It's genuinely impressive how lush and full the more than 40 square kilometers of jungles, towns, and rice are on this vaguely Southeast Asian island. It would be easy for so much landmass to feel empty, particularly with the lack of drivable vehicles, but here it's really well laid out. There's enough space between fights to take a breather, but it's dense enough that action is never far away. There's also a sense of progression, because the troops you encounter become more dangerous the further you push, and there's a bigger focus on PvP in the zones where the player factions intersect. The map is really effective at using geography as an almost natural level select tool, and I appreciate the sense that I was in control of what sort of challenge I was in the mood to take on. But, unsurprisingly for an early access game, it doesn't run well right now. I had squad mates with solid PCs that would struggle with low frame rates much of the time. Even my beefy RTX 3090 dips down into the 20 frames per second range when moving quickly through the jungle, which is not great when accuracy matters so much. Similarly, you need to be prepared for crashes to desktop, items disappearing from your inventory, and character models missing their heads without having been shot there yet, to name a few issues my squad and I encountered. At this point, you need to be willing to chalk up some frustrating losses that don't have anything to do with errors you make on the battlefield. To their credit, the development team has continued to release fixes at a pretty regular cadence, but it's impossible to know how long it'll take to get Grey Zone out of this danger zone. One of the areas in need of a fix is the faction system particularly because you can only have one character on your account. You can only form squads with people in the same company as you. So if you want to play with friends, you either need to all decide in advance which team to represent, or someone is going to have to delete their character entirely and start from scratch in the correct faction. Losing all your money, weapons, and task progress just to play with friends is a tragically bitter pill to swallow especially when the factions are all effectively the same anyway. The last big thing to be aware of for this extraction shooter is that extraction can be a pain. Calling in a chopper to ferry you to or from a mission is easily done from the map, and the few minutes it usually takes to wait for extraction can be tense and exciting, usually. The problem is that each faction only has four helicopters at their disposal, and it's completely out of your control whether other teams are ahead of you in line. All this waiting is another unnecessary obstacle to fun, and an all too common frustrating waste of time. Grey Zone Warfare's early access version has some excellent ideas for a highly realistic take on an extraction shooter, but most of them come with a caveat or two at this point. Yes, the map is huge, lush, and full of enemies to shoot at, but you will need to be prepared to wait far too long for rides to and from objectives. The damage system is realistic and immersive, but it shoots itself in the foot with unreliable hit registration, and playing wounded is a lot less fun. The detailed weapons are painstakingly true to life, with lots of great customization options. But if you don't already subscribe to Soldier of Fortune magazine, it's going to be tough to make great use of it. The enthusiasm and ambition behind this game is palpable, even if it is currently rough, buggy, and too often unreliable. But like a greasy burger at a roadside dive, its charm isn't in craftsmanship, it's in the earnestness. While its flaws are a bit too numerous to list, much less completely overlook, it can hit the spot just right if you have the right sort of hunger. For more co-op shooting, check out our reviews of Fallout 76 and Outpost Infinity Siege. For everything else, stick with IGN.